Adam22 has responded to Andrew Schultz. So um, in case you guys don't know, um, Academics was on Flagrant, Andrew Schultz's podcast, um, and they were talking about a lot of things. It was a four-hour pod, actually, pretty long one. I watched about an hour, but there's loads of time stamps on it, so you can, you know, jump around and shit. Quite a good conversation, um, and, you know, covered all the stuff that I'm into. And they got into talking about Adam. And it's funny because I guess now, because Adam's in his, like, get money, get money stage, people are seeing more of his personality, which you've... I think I've always kind of known and other No Jumper fans have always known that Adam is a Adam is a funny style type of guy. You wouldn't want to be his friend because he will literally do anything for clout. He'll do anything for content. He's definitely the fucking, the chairman of fucking COE, content over everything, right? We already seen it, what he's done with his marriage and shit. We don't need to talk about that. But in general, he's always been that way from the time of the issue with house phone and why he left from the AD stuff, like he's he's all about the drama, the dramatics and all this sort of shit and kind of using the people around him for, you know, for his game to, to line his pockets. But it's becoming more evident now because he's obviously leaning into it a bit more. So Adam um, Andrew Schultz talks about it, which is interesting because some people would describe Andrew Schultz as a bit of a fame whore, clout whore himself. So the fact that Andrew Schultz was put off by Adam says a lot about how bad vibes Adam is, you know? Because Andrew isn't afraid of also being a clout demon. So the fact that he met Adam 22, sat down with him and was like, this guy's a bit funny, that says a lot about him. So let's play this clip. Um, you'll hear Schultz, you know, they're, they're obviously reacting to what Schultz said and then we're going to talk about it. All right, we're, here we we're, go. We're on no jumper. Here we go. And I thought that we're kind of cool. And he had the he had the title in the questions. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, oh wow. The most important thing here. Cause I thought we were like cool. Not like boys or nothing, but I thought we were cool enough, whatever. And I was like, okay, you came in here, you know what your title gotta be for this podcast. You know what the clips gotta be for the podcast. And and I'm like, okay, now I understand who you are. Anything that serves you and continues to succeed within this business, this is going to be a good thing. Exactly. And we're going to go and we're That's going to push Adam. on it. That's basically Adam. I don't hate on it because I like knowing where people stand. Uh -huh. I like knowing what people's intentions are. I operate a little different. You are on this podcast right now. If there's something from this pod, you're like, yo, I don't want out. I'm, I'm cutting it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm cutting it. And that's the thing that Adam will never do. That thing that Adam did to fucking house phone will forever not be will forever haunt him that was the most fucked up thing ever some trans person comes on no jumper they have an interview and for whatever reason the trans person decides to reveal the fact that they hooked up with with house phone now adam has final edit adam is sitting down in the fucking interview this comes out of the blue you would imagine if that's your friend you'd be like whoa okay you let the show go on but you would clip out you would edit out that section where that person fucking exposed one of your close friends. You would do that as a friend. Why not? He didn't. And then it wasn't that he didn't do it. It was more so how he acted after the fact. He was actually offended that people thought that he should have done it. He was acting like it wasn't his responsibility. It was the editor's fault. He was doing everything possible but accepting accountability for it. He refused. And since then, I was like, this guy is weird, bro. If he did that to his friend, imagine what he's going to do to people that he works with. So imagine, and Andrew Schultz has his weirdnesses. So the fact that he could see, that, like even look, look what thing he said. Um, look what, um, oh, <laughs> Uche. Oh. See, this is why I hate this chat because there's, People here with common sense, rational, clear-minded people who make some brilliant points. I can't run with my fucking agenda. I can't run with my narrative. Uche, what about the drug walk question Brendan asks you not to bring up? Yeah, you're right, innit? Schultz hasn't got a leg to stand on, has he, really, innit? Schultz hasn't got a leg to stand on, really, has he? Damn! Okay, cool. Anyway, <laughs> I completely forgot about that. Schultz did, Schultz did, let's take our dislike for Brendan to one side. Schultz did Brendan very dirty there, innit? Schultz and, Schultz and Nakash basically, you know, they basically just ambushed Brendan, innit? 
they basically ambushed him. Right in the middle, him sitting there like, don't make sense, don't make sense. Damn. Adam's not cut. Cap. Pause it, please. Mm-hmm. Wait, he's angry. 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 We've got evidence of you. You don't do it before. I to fuck my wife. I make enough money. Huh. Right there. What you boring. Said. Very boring response. This guy needs to be fired with the black hat. <laughs> anyway, all right. So this is <laughs> this is. I love how he's. A, my th- he's. A, I love that. You see, he couldn't. He had no reply for that. But he was a point. He did make that. He did say on the couch there. And again, it's no. No one gives a fuck. I don't care what they're gonna bet. Like honestly, I'm one of the people on online. I'm one of the people that really. I don't have any feel. I don't know. There are people that have a lot of strong feelings about Adam 22 and Leonard the Plug and how they have this open relationship where they invite girls to fuck and obviously guys now. It doesn't bother me. I don't give a fuck. Like, I don't care. It doesn't bother me in the slightest. It doesn't cheapen or devalue what he has to say. You know, he's still an idiot, but just because he has this relationship that's a little bit out of the norm, it doesn't make what he says any less valuable. You, I still just challenge the strength of his ideas and shit or the lack thereof. You know what I mean? The relationship doesn't really affect the way I look at him. You know what I mean? It doesn't really matter, to be fair. I don't know, maybe I'm in the minority, but it doesn't matter at all. He's enough of a piece of shit person that you should, that should be enough to kind of call out. But it is funny that there's a clip of him on Flagrant where he sits there and says, I make enough money, I don't need to whore out my wife. And then he does. So clearly it shows that when money is down, they change because no coincidence isn't it they tried doing all that stuff when the pandemic happened and obviously the interviews that no jumper kind of died down and i guess they have a monthly nut that's kind of high he wanted to cover it so you know turn the, the porn machine i just always thought to myself maybe i'm in the minority here i've always questioned why adam needed to blend the porn with no jumper though i never understood that why did why couldn't they just be two separate entities why couldn't he be adam 22 from plug talk and then Adam 22 for No Jumper. He always blended them. He would have like porn stars on No Jumper. He'd do like the, like, it wasn't necessary. I think that's what harmed the brand and kind of devalued it a bit. And obviously I know why he did it because No Jumper's got a big platform. So he wanted those eyes because for sure he got those eyes on his porn because of No Jumper. No one would care about his porn if he came out of the gate with the porn. No one would have cared. People care about the porn because it's that guy that used to do interviews. So people are like curious. Oh, I wonder how he fucks or something, right? Like that's what people kind of think in their heads. So, but I think that damaged the brand though. He didn't need to, he could, he could have split it. He could have had a separate channel for porn and a separate channel for, for No Jumper and then not have them cross over. When they crossed over, it's like even No Jumper podcast, when they when he started, when he started talking about his scenes, it's like, bro, like, one minute we're talking about fucking Tory Lanes, and next minute you're talking about some scene you did. I don't care. Do you know what I mean it wasn't it wasn't of interest? So he should have kept them separate. That's my opinion. But who do I know? Come on, play you fucking cunt. You playing? thing about uh, shout out to alex actually i didn't realize what was him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> whoops yeah. but that is an incredibly boring response to what he just said yeah. andrew's like fishing for some like good conversation there and nobody's giving it to that's him anyway response. i just wanted to give Why is that my thoughts on this topic yes please. so when andrew shows as far as i could tell because i was googling for it earlier there's one question that i asked him in the course of that whole interview that we ended up turning into a clip Nobody. that went ve- relatively viral there's actually two but the only one that stands oh, out to me two. as something that he hold on there's one or is there two honestly he's such a slime ball isn't it there's one or two is there one or two or is there one because two is bigger than one you do know that right could be talking about is because he's friends with brendan Schaub, as Ooh. am i at the time that we did that last no, you're podcast. Not, you're not, no, you're not friends with Brendan Shaw. No, you're not. No, you're fucking not. Brendan, if these guys are your friends, you need better friends. These guys are not your friends. <laughs> They're not your friends. Gringo Poppy was still fresh in our memory. Mm. Many people will remember that Gringo Poppy by Brendan Shaw was <laughs> What's that right possibly <laughs> one of the worst received comedy specials of all time. And I'm not saying that because I dislike Brendan. I like Brendan a lot, but I tried to watch the 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 special i didn't make it very far into it you know i was probably like eight or nine minutes into it when i gave up i didn't think it was that great you made it eight or nine minutes i remember a comedy special that was under 29 minutes that's fucking brutal when i asked him 
when I asked Andrew Schultz on the podcast, I asked him about Gringo Poppy. And I remember his response was kind of like, oh, okay, so you're doing clickbait. And I remember kind of like, you know, checking myself in that moment because it was kind of weird in that moment to have him calling out what I was doing, which is I was going out of my way to ask him about a viral topic yeah. in the Kick intent bait. of getting a clip of Kick him bait. talking about it. Because let's be honest, almost anything talking about Gringo Poppy at the time was kind of viral. Now, Schultz didn't give me a spicy answer by any means. Of course. He just basically said, uh, you know, uh, I, I, I can't remember what he said because it was so sort of generic and like intended to take the pressure off of himself so that he didn't have to actually make a statement against somebody that he mm -hmm. fucks with. But I feel like Andrew's kind of like mischaracterizing it because out of the full like two plus hour long interview that we did, I think that that's the only question that I asked that was, you know, evidently being asked because there was a clip that I was clearly going to cut up out of it. But he doesn't you see how he's, he's missed. He's again, oversimplifying the issue. Schultz is saying that that's still a shitty thing to do. Basically, Andrew Schultz is saying, you, even though he did it himself, as Uche pointed out quite clearly there, oh, Schultz is saying you shouldn't ask your friends, quote unquote, these sort of leading questions in the hopes of getting a clip. That's why he basically shouldn't use your friends as clip machines. But he doesn't get it. Doesn't matter if it's once or twice. It's just not cool but he's struggling to understand why why he like it's like yeah and adam is an interesting dude man he's definitely the white joe budden now i think when you look at the stand-up comedy world versus the hip-hop world i feel like a lot of people who watch hip-hop interviews are probably listening to what andrew just said right there and they're confused because in the hip-hop world think about all the big interview platforms you have somebody like vlad who's literally waffling, built his entire business waffling. off being able to ask the really spicy questions waffling. and having no shame about asking <laughs> shit like that nice. you have somebody like academics who i have heard him many times admit waffling. to the fact that when he is doing an interview he will gladly take the devil's advocate side in order to get the content out of you that he wants meaning mm -hmm. that he will gladly mm -hmm. take on an opinion that is not really his in order to get you to defend your position mm -hmm. when you look at all the other platforms whether it's say cheese or cam capone or whatever it's like i feel like this pretty it's pretty common stuff between all of them so i felt like andrew simplifying that entire podcast which if you go back and watch it is a really great one i remember it was a little bit of a source of conflict because we didn't invite trell on it but we had ad and duno on there so there's a lot of laughs a lot of a lot of good vibes and everything but i i f can't help but feel a little bit offended by him reducing an entire two and a half hour great interview down to the idea of like me trying to clickbait him especially when i love how offended he's getting at this i love it i love it because he doesn't usually get this from people because obviously he respects shorts he makes more money than him he's more famous than him again la is interesting isn't it it's an interesting place because if this is anybody else he would have flipped but he's keeping his composure because andrew's what more famous has more money it's like, what a weird place. So you can't call out Andrew Schultz on his bullshit because he has a nicer car than you. Like, what? It's not exactly a question that's totally out of left field. I mean, you are a comedian. You are friends with Brendan Schaub. Call him out on his hypocrisy. So this is not like something I'm asking you about something call that you him don't out have on his familiarity hypocrisy. with. Come on, you man. Know? And, and I get it that he didn't really want to answer that question. And he did a great job of, you know, sort of, dancing around having to make any kind of like offensive statement or anything he was talking spicy too though like, like, he said like something like something weird like which i was like you're like kind of wrong right where like and he was like that you got mad at act and not because act came for your wife because act was attacking the brand but come back to your wife I, I said no like i think that adam married a woman because he cares about her mm. and he was mad that act was attacking her which is why he Wrote act, you know, right? And check act for it. Well, like, so I haven't watched this whole thing, yeah. but one thing that I got from it is that Andrew seems to get it. Fucking flacco, man. <laughs> Bro, you look, they're, gonna, they're not going to fire you, man. What the fuck was that? What, what, what was that? Honestly, bro. <laughs> We've all worked with people like this as well. Look at him looking. He's actually looking at him while he's drinking. Look at him. <laughs> Did I do good, boss? Did I do good? Did I do good? 
Did I do good, boss? Was that good? <laughs> so, he's not gonna fire you. He needs you. Don't worry, Flacco. You're not gonna get. You're not gonna get fired. It's okay. Relax. When it comes to the whole plug talk thing and us doing all this crazy stuff for content and stuff, yeah. is that he? He seems like he's a little bit more honest uh, about how he views that stuff than I think some people are because a lot of people try to create like crazy narratives about me and her doing porn and everything like that. And I feel like Andrew at least kind of got that it's a business thing. It's a marketing thing. He spent time around me and her. So I think that he... <sighs> Objectively though, it's going to end in tears for them, isn't it? I'm, I'm done though. I can't bother to eat talking too much shit. Objectively speaking, and I don't care about it, but it's going to end in tears, isn't it? It's almost written, isn't it? The smugness, entitlement he has about it. You know, he thinks he's better than everybody, smarter than everybody. It's going to end in tears, isn't it? His relationship with, with that Leonard the Plug. Something's going to happen. I, w I wouldn't want it to happen, don't get me wrong. But it's almost written in the stars, isn't it? <laughs> tears and tater tats. <laughs> yeah. I would actually, you know what? I'm not going to lie. Can I say this without sounding like a cuck? I would actually want it to work out. I'm not going to lie. I actually would want it to work out. An open relationship of that kind of, of that level, of that level of intimacy, I would want it to work out just for the culture. You know? I'd want it to work out. I swear, I don't, I don't again, don't ask me why, but I'd actually would want it to work out. I'm not going to lie. I want him to, to be, be forever, forever, have a bunch of kids, fuck a bunch of other random black men. Like, I actually would like to see that from afar. No, but Eddie D, some do, Eddie D, some do. Most don't, but some open relationships do work. And I would like to see this one work. Just for the, just for the, just for the fucking, the fun of it, you know?